This is your host, Jay, and you're watching From Inside Out. What's going on guys thank you so much for tuning in and watching another episode of from inside out i'm your host jay man as promised and if you guys seen my short video on my channel i told you all that i was going to do a video on this 11 year old girl's arrest and the cause of what happened why it happened and all that here tonight but before we get into all those juicy details of that video uh, on the hot phone right now to help me do this video is my colleague, my best friend, my sister, the owner and founder from Inside Out, Jay Lee. Welcome to the show again, Jay Lee. How you doing? Well, it's wonderful being here, Jay. I'm doing good, and thank you for having me. And hello to all our fans in Florida and throughout the entire United States. So thanks for tuning in, and we're here once again from Inside Out. Yeah, absolutely, and. Uh, uh, before we uh, do your little uh, segment for this week, and uh, congratulations again, sis, for making it to another Friday. Uh, as you probably heard through the whole entire week, uh, it's been extremely busy for uh, us over here from Inside Out. Um, but, uh, you know, how, how are you doing nonetheless, and uh, what do you got going on for you? Yeah, everything's great over here. Uh, of course, you know, the environment being in prison is not the, the best, uh, healthiest spot to be in, but uh, we do the best we can to survive and maintain our sanity in a very insane environment at times. Overall, uh, doing well, uh, things are picking up. Uh, we are very, very busy with programs and associating with a lot of old friends, meeting new friends, and just uh, collaborating on a lot of very positive projects. So um, and thank you for that question. And uh, thank you again for all the fans out there who have prayed for me and uh, been there to support me throughout uh, the tough time I went through recently. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, see, this is proof in the pudding again, uh, sister, that, uh, you know, um, having support in numbers like you do, and even me, help out a lot. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. It's very instrumental, and you can't even put a price tag on it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I understand for your segment, uh, and this is our third uh, event, if you will, when it comes to your segment for this show from Inside Out, you have a uh, an interesting, um, well, in the, well, to me it's interesting. I got to read it before we uh, put it up here on the air. But uh, it was a very interesting segment, and, uh, uh, you know, I find I find these segments, if you will, very interesting all the way across board, and uh, you know it's uh, I got a lot of love and respect for you to do these segments, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get you involved with this thing called uh, Imagine That, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, kick it off. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds great. So let's get into our third edition of Imagine That. Yeah, absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, our third edition that is included with this podcast from Inside Out, our colleague Jay Lee from Inside Out is going to do the third segment, Imagine That. Let's get into it. Trans woman, 
I understand fully what pride means to my community. I remember a time when you didn't dare come out for fear of becoming a target. History has shown us what happens to those who do have the courage to reveal their love of the same gender. Remember Matthew Shepard? Today I'm still incarcerated after already serving approximately 30 years. Yes, that's true. Three to zero wow. years. Wow. In all this time, I've witnessed how the corrections system failed miserably in caring for members of my community. My community has been targeted, abused, and subjected to the worst forms of sexual harassment and sexual violence. More to the point, prison guards used to please and keep happy the old school convicts by making sure they had fresh meat in their cells soon after the chambers arrived. This inhumanity continued for years with no action by correction staff to prevent it. All because corrections officers didn't want to make the convicts angry, and so many young men and women suffered as a result. You may be asking, how are prisoners who appear to be young treated today in the Washington State Correction System? Well, I can tell you that the old way of doing business in corrections has changed dramatically over time. No longer is this type of behavior tolerated by correction staff. Yet, sadly, it came too late for some of the most vulnerable among us. Today, I can say for certain that predators don't have the power they once had years ago. And for that, I'm grateful. Now, concerning this word pride, today in most Washington State prison facilities, we have annual pride events taking place. However, the Washington State Penitentiary, where I reside, has decided not to allow members of my community to have our holiday pride event this year. This is a complete outrage. Many of us are saddened to hear this and feel let down by prison authorities. Remarkably, other non-community cultural events were allowed to take place. It seems that because my community is not cisgendered or known as heterosexual, that my community was denied the same opportunity. So what is the excuse for this? Well, not one correctional employee has been able to answer that question. In all fairness, my community made a request for a pride event, and yet we have been denied this opportunity to express ourselves. On the one hand, the corrections system advertises that it supports and encourages pride events within prison facilities, yet this same system turns right around and denies the LGBTQ plus IA community the same. Seems this is contrary to their advertising, don't you think? Another example of two-faced behaviors by corrections employees, the old adage, do as I say, not as I do, becomes relevant here. This is shameful conduct by Washington State Department of Corrections. This type of attitude by DOC is exactly why hate violence takes place within the prison. Because hateful inmates will see and hear about the lack of support from my community, and this will encourage the haters to do just that, hate on us. If you feel the way I do about all this, then now is the time to take action. Let your voice be heard today. You can email the studio at voicesfrominsideout at gmail.com. That's voicesfrominsideout at gmail.com. Or you can phone the studio at 850-291-9220. That's 850-291-9220. Remember to share your pride today because together we can truly make a difference and change the correction system positively from inside out. In closing, I'm reminded that it takes just one person to change people's perspectives on a topic like this. It also takes just a few seconds to share this segment with others. In total, our combined efforts are meaningful and inspirational. So let's be an inspiration to somebody who needs it today. Mm -hmm. And you know, once you become somebody's hero, you can then truthfully say, imagine that. Back to you, Jay.
Holy crap. That was an awesome Imagine That segment, Jay Lee. And uh, wow, quite inspiring. It kind of moved me. And, uh, but it's truth and sadness at the same time. Um, let me speak on something real quick with your segment about the uh, letting your um, voice be heard when it comes to uh, celebrating Pride Month and whatnot. I think that DOC needs to get their heads out of their ass and let you have that event. Your take on that? Yeah, it's way beyond June now, which is typically the month every year when it's supposed to happen. And oh, yeah. And we're quite late, even if it was to happen. And we're so late now that it doesn't make much sense to have a late program. But I'm not advocating that we shouldn't have one. Um, if we do or are allowed to have one in the future, it needs to be scheduled around June, which is when most of the community has their events. And it needs to coincide with outside events as well. So hopefully a little bit of pressure will burst pipes. Right. No, absolutely. And, uh, again, I apologize for you uh, not getting a chance to have that moment in June uh, but nonetheless, out here in the streets, out here in the real world, it, it happens uh, whether you know it or not. So in a sense, it's still being celebrated. But, yeah, I get, I get, the, I get what you're trying to do there, and I respect that. But hopefully next June, uh, things have changed. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to help change that, so June of next year that comes around and, uh, you know, the Pride Month. I'll put it this way. If you guys want Pride Month to be in our prisons, we need to bring – solid change to our system who's with me on that all right well ladies and gentlemen as promised uh i got a little segment segment myself and Jay Lee, i don't know if you heard the news on this it's a viral situation um it went viral yesterday when it was posted it's all over everything uh even our good colleagues over there at inside edition i'm pretty sure you've heard them before uh picked it up including so many other news outlets did you hear the news, Jay Lee, that a 11-year-old child got arrested for making a, basically a false police report and false 911 call? What's your take on that? Yeah, I heard just some um, scattering of it in the grapevine, and then of course you kind of clarified some things right before we started our show today, and uh, it's definitely an outrage. It's reminiscent of, you know, a child who, uh, in some respects, is crying out for attention, and you have to ask yourself, why? Why would she feel the need to do something uh, so negative for attention? Uh, what's going on in the home? That's the first thought that comes to my mind. Back to you, Jay. Yeah, no, absolutely, and you, and you raised some good points. And again, you know, what? again, the question I always ask when I do these type of topics is, what's wrong with our youth? I mean, the, the, the age is getting younger and younger and younger when it comes to this type of activity. I mean, the, the question I have for all of you, and again, I'm hoping that some of you can put the answers and whatnot in the chat. My question I have, uh, and I'm pretty sure Jay Lee will agree with me on this question, is what causes this in the first place? Why are these kids dying um, for attention? Are they not getting enough at home? Is it peer pressure? Is it their friends? Is it the internet? Is it the news? Is it TV? Is it cable? What is it that causes these kids to do what they're doing? Let's go ahead and uh, bring this up on the screen so you guys can see it firsthand yourself, what we got going on here. As you guys can see in the, um, in the, uh, on your screen, this was posted from the site called Inside Edition. If you want to go follow them, go ahead. All credit goes to them for doing this story. But I'm going to play this short video clip, and uh, you can see in the title, it says here, 11-year-old uh, arrested for fake kidnapping prank. Um, you'll, you'll get to hear the details of what caused this in the first place. I mean, we're talking 11, though, nonetheless. So let's go ahead and uh, play this video real quick in its entirety, uncut, unedited, unedited, and whatnot, through Inside Edition. Here's the video. The 11-year-old girl in this police body cam video is in a whole lot of trouble. She made a fake phone call to 911 saying her friend had been kidnapped. She later told cops she thought it would be funny. Well, they didn't laugh, admonishing her to never do this again. Amber Cagliano reports. This 11-year-old is in hot water. She's accused of faking a kidnapping. I'm not going to do this again. 
She thought it was funny and it was a joke and she couldn't get in trouble for it. Police say the girl texted 911 to say that her friend had been abducted by a stranger in a wow. white van. The girl who gave a fake name said she was following the van on the interstate in another vehicle. For the next 30 minutes, she gave updates on the supposed kidnapping. He is tying her up, went one text. He's armed with a gun, said another. Oh my Hurry gosh. up, please. Deputies tracked the girl's cell phone and then went to her parents' home near Daytona Beach. Imagine their surprise when they confronted her and realized she was just 11 years old. You can talk to your parents. They say she fessed up. She stated that she got the idea to prank 911 through a YouTube oh challenge gosh. and thought it would be funny. The arrest report says her father was really upset. You're going to take this as a lesson at 11 years old that if you do something stupid in the future, you're going to enjoy those cuffs. I'm not going to do this again. Volusia oh County Sheriff friend. Mike Chitwood. We had a massive police response. What happens if we crash into somebody and somebody loses their life? Are you hoping that this scares kids into not doing something like this? It's a life teaching moment for her and hopefully it's a life teaching moment for other young folks that are out there. I'm not gonna do this again. The child was charged with making a false police report, which is a felony and misuse of 911. That's a misdemeanor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it right there. Uh, you know, again, <sighs> Holy crap, I don't know if you got to hear any of that, Jay Lee, but uh, come, come to find out, according to the, uh, to the story that was just played there, this 11-year-old girl uh, was trying to do a prank uh, to make herself uh, popular on YouTube. So again, these kids are doing whatever they can for whatever the reason is to try to find a little bit of popularity or fame. Your take on that, sis. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's the culture that we're living in today. It's definitely a different generation from the time we grew up. We were not even uh, knowing that this was even possible back there in the late 80s and early 90s. But this is definitely a very strange and unique moment uh, to highlight stories like this. You know, you know, these kind of stories are not talked about very often in the mainstream news. But yeah, as I was saying earlier, it's definitely reminiscent of um, acting out behavior, someone who needs attention. And you have to ask yourself why. No, absolutely. And again, it brings up a lot of questions. Like I've heard, like Jay Lee just asked, uh, asked the question, what causes these kids at this age, if not younger? So really, it doesn't even matter what age anymore, because obviously we already know from a scientific aspect, ladies and gentlemen, age, uh, you're not fully developed until age 25. And we all know that. It's backed up by science. And uh, an 11-year-old child obviously does not know what they're doing and i'm pretty sure a lot of you are going to ask the same question i'm asking what kind of punishment should take place with this child uh so i'm going to ask you Jay Lee, while you're on the hot phone what kind of punishment do you see with this child this is a felony case uh, making a false police report as you probably know is a felony and uh doing a few other things is a misdemeanor on this case what kind of punishment uh, Jay Lee, do you see here? Well, first and foremost, before I get to the subject of the story, which is the 11 year old, I would start investigating her parents and uh, see what uh, charges need to be filed against them because ultimately parents or guardians are responsible have for, one minute left. Uh, they're responsible for ensuring that um, you know, the child doesn't act out in this manner, or if uh, this person is leading in that direction, that they should have done something about this way sooner than this incident. So I'll call right back and give you some more comments on this. Absolutely. I'll wait for your call. The caller has hung up. So, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it right there from the horse's mouth. Um, we're, we're, this is what we deal with on a daily basis, ladies and gentlemen, constantly, and it's constant. You know, and there's proof right there in the pudding that you cannot make this crap up. We got 11-year-old now, 11-year-olds, younger than that in some cases, acting up, doing stuff they know they're not supposed to. So again, the question arises, where are the parents? Why aren't they watching what their kid's doing? You can't obviously leave your kids unsupervised. So I, I, get, the under, I get also the fact, too, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to make... Uh, a living too. So both parents, the mom and dad, he could be a single dad. We don't know the whole ins and outs of this household. 
We don't know if there's a mom involved. We don't know if the dad is just a part-time dad, full-time dad. We don't know what's going on here. But obviously, there's a little bit of mishap. And uh, uh, <clears throat> stand by. So, welcome back to the show, Jay Lee. I was just basically uh, telling my viewers that you made a good point when before you uh, before your time ran out that uh, you know. It, these kids act up in so many different ways and you can point and we could sit here for hours on end and point fingers to this, 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 and this. Wouldn't you agree? But you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah and, but we're never going to really nip this in the butt until we can find out the real source or problem, if you will, when it comes to, uh, this 11 year old girl acting up. Now keep in mind, I know what I was doing when I was 11 and I'm pretty sure you might know exactly what you were doing when you were 11. But today's kids don't do what kids did back in the day. This generation, in my own personal opinion, sucks. But nonetheless, where are the parents? So, um, again, we, the, there's proof right there, ladies and gentlemen, that this bullshit starts in the home. Where, where was the father, where was the mother when she was on the phone making this 911 phone prank? Aren't you watching your kids? Where are you at? Jay Lee? Yeah, yeah, the questions need to be asked of the responsible adults of the home, and the key word is responsible, right? <laughs> That's ultimately <laughs> what you really got to look at, because obviously the adults weren't that responsible in order to have her so kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, focused on getting in trouble. I mean, they should have realized there were some issues with her early on uh, before this incident took place. But, you know, hindsight always being twenty twenty, looking at it now from basically the back seat, um, it's a sad situation. Um, I don't believe uh, the officers should have put her in handcuffs. I think that's a little bit strange to do that. I understand her procedures follow, but look, we're dealing with a 11 year old child. Unless she was yelling and screaming and kicking and trying to scratch an officer, there's no reason to restrain her. So no. that's the big issue I have with this. Uh, but ultimately, I don't think she should receive a substantial amount of punishment. Ultimately, she needs to just be set down, need to get inside her head, figure out what she was doing, it's the reminiscent of impulsive behavior, basically acting before you think. There you go. And uh, sitting, sitting down with her and having just a very polite conversation with her as to the reasons, hey, what were you thinking and why did you do this? And, I mean, who motivated you? And were you under peer pressure? And just investigating it because I think you're going to find out this was not her idea. No, I'm pretty sure this was a rise from her friends and other, other like you said, peer pressure. Uh, you know, and she's just doing everything she can to try to fit in, doing what is cool for today. Now, I understand you get what I'm talking about when I say cool. You know, kids, kids really fight this trying to fit in. They want to be part of the clan. They want to be part of the clit. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's I, look, we've all been there, okay? They're, they're in, in, especially in high school. I don't know if you agree with me on this or not, Jay Lee. But uh, in high school, there's cliques, there's jocks, there's preps, there's nerds, there's all kinds of different sections where kids want to hang out with who they want to hang out with. Don't you agree with that? Yeah, no, I remember those days. It still happens today. Uh, there might be different titles for these cliques, but yeah, it's all about finding ways to fit in. And one group will challenge another group or, you know, the group that you're involved with will challenge you to do it or not do something. Uh, ultimately, it's peer pressure, mm -hmm. and some girls, unfortunately, like this one, may not have had the courage to withstand it because they feared not being allowed to associate with this certain kind of clique, mm -hmm. or they feared uh, pissing off their friends or maybe someone they had a crush on. Well, no, no, I get it, I get it, but this is a trend now. Uh, not this story, but there was another story that took place somewhere out here in the Deep South. I can't remember exactly where it was. I'll have to do some research and dig up on it. But somebody did this, too, on an interstate out here. 
where they said there was supposedly a toddler roaming up and down the interstate out here. Somebody called it in and said, hey, you know, whatever. But this was an all-made-up, fabricated story. It wasn't even true. So for some reason, uh, Jay Lee, these type of stories seem to be getting quite popular, and it's a trend. And Everybody's calling in fake 911 calls about kidnapping or child abuse or something along those lines. And it turns out it's not even true. So, again, people are picking up these trends to be a YouTube star. Your take on that? Yeah, I mean, the story that got the drama was not true. Ultimately, we found that out. But what was true for the person who created it was all of a sudden they got clicks and views. That became truth to them, and that's why people do it. They get the sense of truth by raising up their uh, popularity or getting the clicks and views. And that's the truth they want, despite how what kind of harm it causes other people. Fear-mongering is the word you're looking for, correct? Well, yeah, that's, that's a form of it. Uh, but it, it gets sensationalism sells. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of that in the mainstream news. Uh, drama sells, uh, false stories that cause harm, that sells. Uh, we're living in a very backwards thinking society today. Yeah, and, and, and there's one thing that you didn't hit on is truth does not sell, obviously. Yeah, yeah, we're living in a society today that's actually opposed to truth. There's only a few select portions of our society that advocate for truth, like your fans who are a part of this show. Uh, they want truth. That's why they tune in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I, I don't know. Look, look, I'm a father. I'm going to say this, and I think I'm going to conclude this as my closing arguments. And, of course, if you have one too, Jay Lee, go ahead and put it in here. But I'm going to go ahead and say this as my closing argument for my podcast for here tonight. I'm a father myself, ladies and gentlemen, as you probably some of you may know. I have a daughter. Okay, yeah, she's not 11, but I have a daughter nonetheless. I also have a son. And I'm going to tell you from a father perspective, and the only reason why I'm saying this is because I lived in a dysfunctional, effed up home. I want you guys to pay attention to this for a second. I lived in a very dysfunctional, effed up home, not to get too graphic. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, people say kids learn what they live. Now, to a certain extent, that might hold true depending on what it is. But I'm walking, talking proof, ladies and gentlemen, that I don't live how I was raised. And I will not put myself or subject myself in that situation. And I will not put my kids in that situation. And when I say that, it pisses off, you know, my father when I brought that up to him one day. But nonetheless, we need to teach our kids what our boundaries are, what respect is, what love is, and so many other things, and teach them what peer pressure is too. Like I've said, ladies and gentlemen, it starts in the home. Be a parent. Otherwise, wrap it up or keep your legs closed. If you do not want to be responsible of taking care of a child, then don't do what it is to make a child. Be a parent, grow up, and do right by your kids. And that's my final argument or closing statement right here on this podcast from Inside Out. Jay Lee? Yeah, well, I do have a brief uh, closing argument, if I may, uh, Jay. Go ahead. Well, ultimately, looking at the situation from the backseat and looking forward, uh, something kind of is striking to me, and that is, it should not have come to this. Yeah. I believe this could have been prevented. I also believe that ultimately the investigators are going to find out that it wasn't her idea and also probably somebody else's idea she was trying to impress. Yep. And ultimately, peer pressure probably had its day in this story. Absolutely. But ultimately, no matter, no matter who caused it and no matter who was responsible for it to happen, look look at the law enforcement here. Why in the hell are they putting her in handcuffs? Yeah. If that's not a way to traumatize a child more than she already has been, shame on law enforcement for putting her in handcuffs. It's such a shameful thing to do. So we need to investigate that as well. But, uh, yeah, I'll just say this. Uh, 
unfortunate story, very sad. We hope for the best for her, and we're going to keep her in our thoughts and prayers. Back to you, Jake. No, absolutely. Nicely said. And of course, you know, I'm not dogging the parents. I'm just saying from a parent perspective myself, I know where my kids are at right now while I'm sitting here doing this podcast. I know where the mother's at. I know where my son's at. Right here in the home. They're not out doing all this stuff that you see online right now. So I guess, I guess it goes to show you what parents do give a damn and which ones don't. Now, again, I'm not dogging this father, this parent, because I don't know the backstory in more detail. And I want to make it clear. I understand parenting is hard. It's not easy. You don't, I mean, you can't get nothing done around the house if you've got to sit there and babysit your 11-year-old, 11-year-old child constantly. If you need to get stuff done around the house, if you need to go to work, if you need to make a living to pay the bills, then find a babysitter. If you're single, that is. If you got a mother, where's the mother? You know, th- th- these are the things that we need to, to change. We need to keep an eye on our kids because obviously even with this child here in this video, she can't be trusted now. And it, let's just say hypothetically, God forbid, if she really does get kidnapped later down the road or in the near future, God forbid, no one's going to believe her now. Her credibility's shot. So now what? Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, yeah, right, absolutely, Jay Lee. And, uh, and again, this is what I'm talking about. I've done multiple, multiple videos on this same scenario with proof in the pudding right there. It starts in the home. Again, be a parent. Stop being so goddamn lazy. And that's where I'm going to draw the line right here in our studios from inside out. Jay Lee? Yeah, yeah, good point. So, yeah, ultimately, uh, I think we're going to flush out a lot more details on this story as we move along. And uh, people are going to be shocked to know what drove this to happen, who was actually responsible. But, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, she will have to learn and be retaught what to do or not to do in these type of situations. So hopefully Absolutely. in the future, she will never do this again. Absolutely. And, again, all thoughts from us here in the studio from Inside Out, all thoughts and prayers go to the family, including the 11-year-old, because I know you don't know what you're doing, honey, sweetheart. I know you don't know what you're doing. You're only 11, okay? And I understand hanging out with your friends, the, uh, being a teenager or what you call a preteen now. I understand all these things that you're going through. You're going through a major change in your life right now, okay? Again, no excuse. But I want you to understand that there are people out there that do care, all right? But as far as, as, far as the police go, I don't know if it was a protocol, like you said, Jilly. I don't know if it was part of their procedure or, or, or process. Uh, nonetheless, I don't think they should have put her in handcuffs. That's just my personal opinion. And, uh, you know... We need to figure out a different solution on that. She needs to talk to maybe a counselor. Maybe somebody else needs to get a hold of her. Maybe her parents aren't being parents enough. Maybe the parents aren't teaching her right from wrong. Who knows? We don't know. But the bottom line is, we are here. Don't be stupid. Think about your movements. Think about your stuff before you do it. Playing on 911 is illegal. Okay? So I'm just going to leave it at that. So, Jay Lee, again, uh, my appreciation for you tuning in for this show tonight is uh, much appreciated for all of us here from Inside Out. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, what, is there anything going on with you in the future? Well, definitely working on other uh, topics for future Imagine That segments. And, of course, we're working on uh, building up this show and making it stronger and uh, uh, trying to get the word out and doing some advertising over here. So definitely staying busy. Oh, absolutely, and that's what's going on here behind the scenes, too, that not a lot of people can see. But uh, we got some big things uh, coming down the road here, and I can't wait for all of you to be a part of it. If you are sub to me, you are a part of it, but if you're not a part of this amazing ride, sub now, because I don't want you guys to miss any uh, uh, you know, excitement on this channel, because I bring truth, facts, and true data to this podcast. I don't hype it up. Well, anyways, guys, that's going to cut it for this podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Jay. We will see you all on the next podcast. Good night, everybody.